Well, she's been in the family all my life. Mm. She belonged to my grandmother and she used to be kept in the back of a very dark, very cluttered cupboard. Yes. And as a treat once a year, if my sister and I really played our cards right, she would be brought out and my grandmother would wind her up. And she'd and do her, she she'd do her thing. She's dressed beautifully in this silk, which is... It's deteriorating, mm. but it's inevitable. Mm. Um, when you think that she was probably made in around 1890, 1900, mm -hmm. the fact that your grandmother very cleverly kept her at the back of a, <laughs> a cupboard, I'm sure it was nothing to do with keeping her out of your way. <laughs> she merely wanted to conserve the fabric. Mm. <laughs> and in fact, that has, I'm sure, helped. You can see it's, it's beginning just to it's... go into tatters here. Um, she's standing on a little velvet-covered box which contains all the gubbins, it contains the musical movement and it will contain all the cams and the cogs to yes. set her going. But what I want to do is to turn her round and just see if there is anything that might be revealed on the back of her head. And there is the letters SH and the number 1300. So in fact that tells me that she was made by a company called Simon and Halbig. The 1300 is actually the mould number of her particular face. Um, so yes, I, I would have said that she is probably dating from about 1900 or so from that head. People say, oh well, how come that they made these very um, fragile toys for children? And of course the answer is they weren't for children at all. They were actually made for adults as after dinner entertainment pieces really, a, a sort of rich man's plaything in a way. They were originally made in Paris and there were a number of top makers and um, she was made by Leopold Lambert. She would have been dressed for a particular market, in this case for Spain, exported and sold down there. The market for these is really very strong and the more that the automaton does the more movements that it has the more expensive they tend to be and looking at her she's got movements to her oh <laughs> this this bee obviously thinks that she's a very delicate flower i'm just going to blow him away there we go so moves hit the tambourine, her head moves and so on. So she's got several movements there. And I think that if she came up for auction, we'd be talking about perhaps a figure of uh, between 1,800 and perhaps just over 2,000 pounds. Very good. So she's lovely. And I'd like her, if we may, just to, to play her out. So I'm going to just give her a bit of a wind at the back there. Turn the knob. <laughs> 